in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And your spirit. My dear fathers and brothers, welcome to this Eucharistic celebration. We are indeed intensely preparing these last few days. Let us focus on St. Joseph. May he intercede for us that we may always do the will of God. Coming together as God's family, let's once again acknowledge our unworthiness and ask of the Lord for pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, a mother telephoned to the parish priest on the eve of Christmas. She said, Father, please have me excused. My son cannot be part of tomorrow's Christmas play. The parish priest asked, what is his role? It is St. Joseph, she said. Oh, doesn't matter. If it had been Mary, it would have been problem. If it had been angels, they have to shake their wings and all. It would have been problem. Thank God he is not the Magi. Or thank God he is not one of the shepherds. I can manage because he is only Joseph. Silent man, hardworking man. Just as there are donkeys in every community, there are who are carrying the burden of the community without any recognition, working hard for the community. There is one person during this Christmas season, a wonderful person. We hear much about the Annunciation to Mary, but today is Annunciation to Joseph. He was betrothed to Mary. Still, the marriage is not complete. Mary is pregnant. He knows he has nothing to do with it. The Gospel tells us he was a just man. According to Mosaic law, he can denounce her and the result would have been Mary would have been stoned to death. He chooses at the same time another path. Yes, I have nothing to do with it, but I don't want to do anything unkind. I will silently send her away. Compassion, kindness, gentleness, magnanimity. That was his decision. But then ultimately, when the Lord reveals that she is conceived because of the Holy Spirit, Today's Gospel ends, and Joseph did as it was commanded to him. Yesterday, Father Uncle said about obedience, obedience, obeying the will of God. There is not a lot of time to speak all the wonderful qualities of this silent, hardworking, just, compassionate, docility to the will of God, man of Joseph. But then, look at Joseph. Learn from him understanding, kindness, especially his sensitivity to the feelings of others is really very, very remarkable in this one incident. A girl refused to go to school. The father asked, what happened to you? No, you give me permission to shave my head. The father, okay, you shave your head, but I don't like it. Why you want to shave your head? You know, one of my companions is affected with cancer. She had to undergo chemo. She lost all her hair. All are making fun of her. Four of his friends 
wanted to get permission from their respective parents and shave our heads also. Instead of one mutta, there will be five muttas. Nobody will make, nobody will make fun. Sensitivity of that little girl, Joseph had. Go into the shoes of others. Know the feeling of others during the holidays. Others have problems. People are in need of your love, understanding. May we learn from Joseph to feel for others, not to do anything unkind. Amen. Pray, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be co the companions of Christ, by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice as the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary and the God, with St. Joseph and beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have peace you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quiet spiritual of life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. What matters is ultimately that we submit to doing the will of God. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, who constantly sought to do the will of the Father. Let us imitate Him and pray and do Father's will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to His banquet. Lord, I am not worthy. Let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.